All right, my beautiful friends, here we go. I have a lot to cover with you here. Uh, I'm going to ask you to share this video before you even get started. Today was a very dark day for more reasons than one, and we're going to cover a lot of stuff because I can tell you right here and right now, despite the fact that we just had the largest point drop with regard to the Dow Jones Industrial Average in history, fell 3,000 points. We're not done. We are not done. Um, I don't think a single one of you here should be happy for what you are seeing or what I'm about to tell you. It took three years for the stock market to go from President Trump's inauguration to put on the gains it put on to its recent high. It took three weeks to erase them. They're gone, absolutely gone, except for maybe a couple of hundred points. This is nothing at all to be happy about. I understand some of you despise the man. I despise lies, propaganda, and fakery. I have nothing against the man himself. Um, I just think people, and I know for a fact, and it should be evident, people have been misled on an epic scale. On an epic scale, and the lies continue to get bigger and bigger, and they will get bigger and bigger. So there's nothing here to be happy about because people got hurt. And those people that got hurt financially, I want you to understand what has happened over the last three weeks. Let's put this into perspective. Three years ago, when President Trump was elected, I said on Greg Hunter's show, go check Greg's archives, the stock market would vault higher. I went against guys like Mark Cuban, who was saying the market was going to crater. No. It was so evident to me that stocks were going to vault higher during his election, uh, after his election, that, again, I came out publicly, I explained that. Three years later, we hit an all-time high. Three weeks later, we've erased those gains. We've erased them. And this is sad because people got destroyed here. And their cash simply got taken from their account and moved to someone else's reality. That's all that happened. Not everyone lost money over these past several weeks. I haven't lost a single dime. I've made, I've made money here. Uh, and a lot of traders... The Wall Street banks, the investment banks, the hedge funds, they made money too. This is the way it is. Markets have buyers and markets have sellers. All this cash, it's not even real. What you think may be in your accounts. Unless you pull it out and it's in your hands, you got nothing. You have zero. You have digits on a screen, which may make you feel all, all warm inside. But that they don't exist. They're not on the elemental chart. They're in fantasy land. You understand? But again, it, it, if you lost money in this market or cash over the past several weeks, it just got transferred from your account into another person's reality or an institution's reality. That's what happened. And it's going to continue here. We haven't seen anything yet. Um, we are in a full-blown financial crisis. Is there anything more to say than this? President Trump's entire presidency, his stock market gains are now gone. Three years to build them up. Three weeks to erase it. And I told you, oh, this is exactly how it would happen. It would just melt down. It's done by design to catch you off guard. To I mean, to not even allow you to think fast enough that what you should do, maybe, you know, but, but again, I told all of you the Friday before this started, I pulled my own cash out of this market. That should have been the biggest tell on the face of the earth. How many of the financial guys came out the Friday before the meltdown? It started that following Monday. How many financial Wall Street guys came out publicly and made an announcement like that? I have yet to hear from or find one. 
So if you follow or have followed my work, you knew exactly, almost to the day, to the day, when this was going to melt down. Because I told you. I promised all of you for years I would keep you on top of this market. I told all of you for years that when this moment would occur, I would be here for you, and I was. And I still am. And I'm here to tell you that we haven't seen anything yet. Today, we're hearing... Actually, this started again on Friday the 13th of this month. The day that whatever was left of a free market died. Um, it's over. Your freedoms are going to start to disappear too. Very, very soon. You have the right to be confined. Remember that. Now, I'm not saying that something does not need to be done about this virus here. But it looks like that's the only right they're leaving you. If you listen to the rhetoric going on here. There's no other solution other than confinement. And I get it. I get it. That is the first thing that should be done. Uh, isolation of people to stop the spread of this virus. But this virus is going to be used. It's already being used as a scapegoat for what's happening here in a bubble market. This market was going to correct one way or the other. The fact that we have this virus come up all of a sudden at a peak bubble. How do we know it was a peak bubble? How do we know that the stock market was a peak bubble? You, you want to know where the proof is? Because I told you what I did. I told you I pulled my cash out of my core positions in the stock market. To me, it looked like a peak bubble. And I nailed it to the wall. To the wall. Virus comes up at a very opportune time. The virus is going to be used as an excuse for everything. It has nothing to do with the monster debt market bubble, which hasn't even burst. Sure, there are cracks all over the place. How do we see that? The cratering yield curve. The fact that we have a 10-year yield below one. The fact that the Federal Reserve just lowered their federal funds rate to zero and negative rates are coming. The fact that the Federal Reserve is firing broadsides at this market in the form of debt. The fact that we have both Republican lawmakers and Democratic lawmakers completely on the same page, calling for bailouts, calling for more debt, calling for low rates, calling for helicopter money. Helicopter money is a worst case scenario where the government starts literally giving cash to people. It's not going to work. There's not enough. What is it all about? What's really happening here? They are trying to prevent a liquidity crisis. I can't say this enough. I did a whole video about it. A credit freeze. Do you know what today is? I told, I told all of you several days ago that the Federal Reserve increased their repo operations to $500 billion per day. Today it's going to be $1 trillion. The first day ever where the, where the Federal Reserve is going to operate a $1 trillion dollar repo operation. Do you think this is the last one? No. This is the first of many. And let me tell you something else. You think one trillion is a lot? It's going to two. It's going higher. They can't stop. If you listen to what's going on here, you're hearing the same things that happened in 08. Bailouts. Easy money. Adding digits to a screen, quantitative easing, helicopter money, suppressed rates, although now to a much larger degree, much, much larger. There's no comparison to what we had in 2008, to what we're seeing now. We've already exceeded that whatever happened in 08 with regard to money being f pushed into this market, we've exceeded it by exponents. Exponents! And it's about to get much worse. So do you think you're not going to hear this? The president today should, should have leveled with the American people when he was being, right as the market was closing, maybe he's still talking now. He was given a briefing on the markets on the coronavirus. The man really should be leveling with the American people and saying, America, we are in a financial crisis. We need to come together 
both parties, which is really one party, all of us need to be mutually supportive. We have got to come together here. Um, but he can't tell you that because just as the meltdown was occurring, the week this started, the president still stuck to his narrative. The economy is booming. Mnuchin, same thing. Kudlow, same thing. This is the diabolic trinity, okay, in, in my view, because they can't and will not level with you. You have to be distracted. You have to believe that the worst is over. People, we haven't even, haven't even seen the debt bubble burst yet. What are they doing? They are throwing everything they can at the debt bubble to keep it inflated. Everything. Despite what you've seen in the stock market, three years of gains disappear in three weeks. Despite that, despite that, they're still trying to convince you that everything is okay. Why? Because they need you in the market. President Trump and Steve Mnuchin said today, he knows people are taking their cash out of the banks. Don't take your cash out of the banks. To me, that says, take your cash out of the banks. That's how my mind works. I don't know how yours works, but when I have a lying politician, and I'm not just calling the president a liar here, Obama lied just the same. They're all lying. They're all lying to us on an epic scale. By design, people, they don't work for you. None of them do. Zero. They work for the central banks. They work for the military industrial complex. They work for the new world order. And the new world order is about to strip you of everything that you can say, everything that you believe, and then lastly, they're going to rob you of your intellect. That's what they do. The first thing they do is take away your voice. You can't speak. You can't say anything outside the norm that's not politically correct. Most people willingly have given that up. Number two, they strike at your beliefs, at your convictions, okay? They try to convince you that what you believe is not right. Uh, and you need to look here. Don't look here. That what you're, you're seeing unfold before your eyes is not happening. Then comes the death blow. Where they strike at your intellect. You're not even allowed to think. What is this called? Tyranny. Tyranny, people. Um, we're in it now. And this virus is going to be used as a weapon against you in more ways than one. Again, it's a scapegoat. It's the biggest scapegoat at a very opportune time. Again, it's not the bubble debt market. It's not the bubble stock market. It's not companies that that are have no touch with reality regard to their valuations. I've spoken about this forever. No, it has nothing to do with that. It's not the lies and the propaganda and the fakery out of our politicians across the board. It's not the distractions, the look here, the don't look here. No. Everything is the coronavirus. And I can prove that to you. Go to Fox Business. Go to CNBC. Go to Reuters. Go to Market Watch. Everything we're seeing is the coronavirus. Virus. It's not the bubble markets. It's not the distorted markets. It's not the twisted markets. It's all coronavirus. And I hope people aren't buying this. And again, I want you to think about what I said. Today is historic for another reason. The first day ever, the Federal Reserve will institute a $1 trillion repo and we're not done. Calls for bailouts. Helicopter money. Um, sound familiar to you? Suppressed rates, negative rates, more debt. Is this their solution? Are you hearing any other solutions other than we need more debt? Other than we need negative rates? Other than you need to be paying your financial institutions to keep your cash in them? Are you trying to tell me that there are no other solutions? Of course there is. And let me tell you this, 
It's not adding more debt. Adding more debt here is fueling the monster. It's fueling the monster. We got to get the anti-debt. The anti-debt. And you know what this is. When you hear a politician, any of them, calling for more debt, calling for helicopter money, calling for bailouts, all this means is more debt. How is more debt going to fix a full-on debt crisis marching into a liquidity crisis and a credit freeze? That's where we're going. Don't you understand that? How do you prevent this all from happening? It's very, very simple. It's very simple, and I've covered this over and over again. At its inception, the debt-based economic model was designed to allow the central banks of the world to own everything, to be the buyers and lenders of last resort. Who's the borrower? You are. We are the people. That's the nature of the debt-based economic model. It demands that more cash be borrowed into existence in greater and greater amounts. It can't stop. The moment we stop, we're done. Mad Max, credit freeze, no, no cash. The digits that make you feel all warm and fuzzy when you look at them in your bank account that are not even there, well, it all just disappears. Just like President Trump's stock market gains, three years to build them up, three weeks to erase them. But you all knew this was coming. You all knew it. You all knew this was coming. And again, there's a reason why you have heard prior uh, Fed presidents like Ben Bernanke tell you that gold and silver are not money. There's a reason why President Trump and most members of Congress don't want you in a cryptocurrency. They want you and need you in a fiat currency. In this case, they need you in a central bank issued note. The Federal Reserve owns it all. That's what they want. That's what they need. Again, it's the banks that run the world. It is not run by presidents. It is not run by kings, queens, monarchs, or dictators. The banks run the entire show because they control our mode of transaction. You understand? And nothing else is going to be allowed. People, um, we could fix this today. Right now. Today. How? Very simply. I told you already, and I'll just cover it again. The president needs to say that the Federal Reserve does not have the public interest in mind and forbid them from issuing one more dollar of debt. Of course, the other central banks, there are hundreds of them, would continue. But let's just start off with here in the United States. We need world leaders. It can't just be one. So stop with the President Trump is going to save us all and, and institute a gold standard. If leaders around the world were to get together behind closed doors somehow, okay, and say that their central banks are not in public interest, and by executive order declare them public enemies, that's it. Then we take back the monetary system. How? It's the easiest thing in the world. And it's been done before. They have to revalue the price of gold. Gold is the most stable asset in the world. If you look historically at the price of gold in relationship to purchasing power, you will see it's steady. It's steady. One ounce of gold will buy the same thing today that it would have bought 50 years ago. It's the most stable asset on earth. Now, understanding that, they need to revalue gold. President Trump needs to say by executive order, what we're going to do is declare the Federal Reserve a public enemy, not in the public interest. Stop them from issuing a single dollar of debt. Revalue gold. Let's just put a number on it. $25,000 an ounce. It's been done before. It sounds crazy, but it's been done. Gold has been revalued many times throughout history. Then, 
He says, okay, we're ta we take back the monetary system and we're going to back it. We don't have to back it with pure gold. Not at all. Just a fraction. Just a fraction. We take a debt-based unit and convert it into a wealth-based unit. We completely flip the system upside down and we win. But you will not hear that. World leaders will not do this. They are working for, again, a very dark entity. And they do not have your interest in mind. If they did, let's say just here in the United States, do you believe that the president would have gone out of his way to inflate a stock market bubble which just lost all of its gains in three weeks? Destroying people. People are getting laid off. Do you know what's coming? Do you know what's coming next? Mass layoffs. Goldman Sachs is predicting a recession. I say we're going into depression. It's not just Goldman Sachs, the mega bank. All these banks are predicting a recession despite Larry Kudlow, Mnuchin, no recession coming. We know Larry Kudlow missed the last one completely as it was happening. He said there was no way, quote, no way we're going into recession. It was called the Great Recession. These people do not have our interest in mind, people. We got to look out for each other, not just yourself. And I hate that. I hate that. When people say, well, I don't care about this because I'm doing okay. Really? Let's see how that plays out for you, okay? I'm here. I don't need to be here. I'm here because I care about you. I care about all of us. We have got to understand once and for all, it ain't gonna happen, that we are not each other's enemies. That there is a dark force here. There is a very hideous, ugly, dark force, okay? The government and the central banks direct collusion <laughs> to, to bring about a change that I don't think many people have an understanding of right now. Again, what are they going to do? They're going to take away your voice, which most people have willingly given up. They're going to attack your beliefs, your convictions, and then you get the death blow. That's how tyranny works. And this virus is going to be used as a weapon. They are going to weaponize it. It already is a weapon. I think most of us realize this is a bioweapon that was dispersed at just the opportune time. When? When the stock market was at a maximum bubble. When I told you I took my cash out of this market. Look, I know this video has been awfully long and I can sit here and talk for another hour about these things. But what I want you to do, because this is a lot to swallow, I want you to ponder what, I'm, what I have said here. I want you to think about these concepts. I and a lot of this stuff you probably heard like five minutes ago in this video, you probably forgot. Things tend to just go in people's ears and out the other. I want you to focus on it. Listen, watch. I'm going to urge you to watch this video three times. Three. And let it settle in. Think about these concepts I've covered with you. And what does it all mean for you? Okay. Now, that's important, of course, what it means for you. Because things are going to hit you directly. Again, you lost money in this market, you're feeling the pain. Three years of gains, gone in three weeks. A couple hundred points. That's it. We're, we're a couple of hundred points higher than when President Trump was inaugurated. A couple of hundred. That's it. Um, what does it mean for you if this market bleeds off another X percent? If you lose your job, how is that going to affect you, your mortgage, your payment, your family? Think about these things. And then people, what you need to do is seek out organizations or form your own. Form your own. Get people together that are on the same page. Some type of a mutually supportive organization where people can come together and, and know that the person they are talking to also has their interest in mind. Since, since forever, I've told you that we are responsible for each other. We are. And they have gone through great lengths to divide us, divide and conquer. And we haven't seen anything yet, people. Anything at all. This guy loves you a lot. I'm going to ask you to share the video. I'm going to ask you to watch this video three times. Okay?
three. It's very important. I'll see you in the morning. I'm out of here.